Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Mad Capper and this is another video on Raid Shadow Legends. Today we are going back to the clan boss and this time we're going to talk about Spirit Affinity Ultra Nightmare clan boss when using Rosh card in your unkillable. This is the absolute painful one for those of you who uh, who are using the unkillable comp. You know that the Spirit Affinity is absolutely nightmare and it's because it uses a speed debuff. This debuff causes you to go slower and therefore fall out of turn order. Now, I don't have a key, but I like talking from the from the map, so we're just going to go in here. As you can see by the eight keys that I've used today, I've gone through several different comps. We've tried several different things, but I want to talk to you about the ones that I know for a fact work. So let's talk first about the one that, uh, the Void Affinity, which is, of course, the one that puts up the most damage. Just as a quick recap... This is the team I use for Void Affinity, and Valkyrie takes the stun. This does about 45 to 47 million damage a key, and uh, typically if I get up early, up in, early enough in the morning, I will get that key in. Uh, I try not to use more than one key on Void Affinity to give everyone else a chance to, to hit the boss, but I do want two keys on those times that I might be too busy to use multiple keys, so uh, it is nice to get that Void Affinity out of the way. The problem with using this is this girl right here has a turn meter boost whenever an enemy receives a buff, which is what happens with your clan boss once it switches affinity. So I have to take her out. The easiest way and the most simple way is this one right here. And this is what we're going to show you first. It is, like I said, the easiest of the different styles. And this is where Skull Crusher comes in, uses his counterattack one turn early, and he takes the stun, it gets cleansed by the Doom Priest. He's got less HP than the Doom Priest, therefore he always gets the stun. And it still does about 33 to 35 million damage, which is more than enough to two-key the clan boss and uh, work really well. If you want to see the the uh, stats of these four, just go look at the other video. It is the Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss Unkillable with Rosh Card video, and that will show you what the stats are for each of them. But I'll show you the Skull Crusher stats. He's coming in at 174, which is the same as what Valkyrie was, with 44k HP, 4300 defense. If you want to try to eke some more damage out, you can increase his defense, increase his crit rate and crit damage, uh, and so he can do a little bit more damage if you want. If it's that important to you, go ahead. Uh, the second comp I'm going to show you, and what we're going to do is I'm going to go through the two viable ones. We're going to talk briefly about a couple that did not work, and then we will move on and show you the actual two runs. So the second comp I used that works is this. Now we're going to put Rosh card in the lead to get some extra HP, and then we're going to use my good friend Black Knight. Uh, Black Knight is a very rarely used champion. He he was he was awful. He did receive a buff, which made him a little bit better, but unfortunately not good enough. That said, he is perfect for this. First of all, he has weak affinity, which means he will be targeted by the clan by the clan boss on Spirit Affinity. And what makes it so great is he has this passive right here on a two-turn cooldown that anytime he gets hit for 15% max HP in one attack or more, he throws up an unkillable buff so he cannot be killed. Well, the clan boss at some point puts damage down of 100, 150, 250k on that stun. Does not matter because he cannot be killed. Uh, and what happens is, of course, he gets stunned. It goes from a two-turn to a three-turn cooldown but that's still is enough time for it to be up the next time he gets stunned so how does this work well there is one more thing you have to do and you have that is you have to remove doom priest or make sure that she has more hp than your black knight i don't have that scenario so unfortunately what we have to do instead is we have to remove her so how are we going to get rid of the fact that there's a speed debuff from the from the clan boss well, that is simple, mon frères a mares. Is that a thing? I use a very cheap to make rare named Reliquary Tender. We put her at the same speed as Doom Priest, and she's going to cleanse on the second round, uh, after the second round, apologies, after the second round to move the speed. She goes first all the time on the sec on the, on the the after the second AoE, so she'll just cleanse out it, and then you go on as usual. This is going to net you about yeah, just shy of 30 million, maybe 30 million damage. So you still have more than enough to three key if you happen to have all three keys on Spirit Affinity, and it can even get you a 
uh, you know, it can get you a two key if you've gotten that a good damage on the void before moving to affinity. So these are the two that work. Now I want to show you a couple that don't. Now there are a couple ways that you can make them work, but as they stand with my team, I, they cannot work. The first one is Grizzled Jarl. In theory, this is a brilliant idea. You bring in Grizzled Jarl, he's going to do more damage than Reliquary Tender. He'll be able to block debuffs on the second round after or before the second round, and then you no speed debuff. Who cares? Everything else works as intended. The problem is in the second round, only on the first set of turns the rosh card goes after so what happens is he puts up his block debuffs on that first aoe2 right before it and then rosh card goes which makes him vulnerable clan boss goes has a percentage chance to land a speed debuff on rosh card if rosh card gets the speed debuff the round is over there are ways around this you can put him in immunity gear if he's in immunity gear he gets two turns of immunity where he can't be uh debuffed then bam that doesn't happen every other subsequent turn he goes before the uh the grizzled jarl so it's not a problem at all uh grizzled jarl protects the whole team from the uh from the speed debuff and it works throughout the two run it's just that second turn so if he's sitting in immunity gear that works perfectly fine i don't have good enough immunity gear to also get the speed so i'm not doing it but that is just so you're aware anytime you're using any of the block debuff also, you can use Bad Alcazar in this position. Uh, he has a cleanse on a three-turn cooldown, so he can be at 183, and he will work as well. I don't have a Bad Alcazar. Anyone who has a three-turn cleanse that is an AoE, Steel Skull does not work because it's targeted, and he's a moron, so doesn't know how to properly target your stun guy. He'll ghost, or how to... Oh, it's a targeted anyway, so it doesn't work. What am I talking about? It's targeted, not AoE, so forget I even said anything. Uh, so the other option I have, now this one kind of works, but doesn't quite perfectly work. Now we have these four here, but I can bring in Steadfast Marshall. The advantage of this is that it does not matter if it is Spirit Affinity or not. This will not last uh, 50 turns, but if you're in a pinch and you just need to get through to get 20 million, 18 million damage, this will work. The reason why I don't recommend it has nothing to do with him not being able to take stuns because you could replace her with a war, uh, 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 warlord, right? Warlord not only extends debuffs, but puts up a shield so that your steadfast marshal can live longer. That is not the problem. The problem lies in the good old... FU that Plarium is called base resist. If you have a thousand accuracy, there still is a percentage chance that the opponent will resist your debuff. And in this particular case, while you think it would be a good thing, it's not because if the stun is resisted, he gets out of turn order. And here's the reason why. So turn one, you use this, right? So the clan boss goes because they're speed tuned to go after the clan boss. So round one, AoE 1 from the clan boss, you use this. AoE 2 two from the clan boss, you use this. Before the stun, you use this, which gives you an extra turn. Then you use this. This puts everyone under a veil except you. The great thing about this is that now, no matter what affinity it is, you can force the clan boss to hit you. That's a huge deal. The problem is, so then, hear me out, you got a three turn. So that goes to two turns after using this. You get stunned. So these two stay at three turn and, tur and two turn for one turn. And then the cooldowns re keep going down. And this resets itself right before the stun. You use it. Then you use Veils, rinse, and repeat. And it works just fine. But we talked about that base resist. If your Steadfast Marshal resists the stun, which it did do two out of the three test runs I did on it, it resisted the stun. And then what happens is he uses this around early. He uses this around early and your team dies. Uh, it may happen in the first round. It may happen in the 25th round. Obviously, the other problem is in this particular case, case I need the cleanse. Because I need that cleanse, I can't run any sort of uh, like a warlord or anything in this particular case. Uh, but 
if even if you had a warlord all it takes is for one time for him to resist the stun and everything's out of turn meter now you can stop the run manual it back on course so if you are okay with doing that this is an option if you don't have anything else steadfast can do it just remember that you have to watch the run and any time that he resists the stun you then have to stop it and manual it to get it back into turn order That is why I do not recommend this, but it is out there for you. So without further ado, we're going to show you the other two runs. I believe, in case I didn't show you, I'm pretty sure I showed you his stats, right? There's his stats there. The big thing is he doesn't use his, his A3. And I don't know if it's just because he has too much HP and he just does more damage with his A1. But I am trying to get him to use his A3, which is if when he has no health, he, it increases the damage. So I am going to rebuild him with absolutely zero HP, as little as possible. And then use Doom Priest as well with him. And, and see if I can up the ante on his damage. Uh, and, and see if I can use, if he'll ever use that. Because I want to see how much damage it can do potentially. Uh, he, he never uses it. So what I'll do is I ran out of silver. I'm going to run him with like 30k HP. And I'm going to try to push his attack up as far as I can. If I can get it to 4k, that'd be great. So uh, a future video, if it works and he does hit hard. I suspect he hits like a little bitch. No offense to female dogs everywhere, but he hits like a bitch. He does. He he doesn't hit very hard. Uh, it's underwhelming. Let's put it that way. I think he had a half a million damage. Anyway, I've talked enough. Let's go through the runs. You can watch them. If there's anything I didn't show you, any questions you may have at all, please leave them in the comments down below. Also, please feel free to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. If and when I hit 500 subscribers, I will be doing a $50 Amazon gift card giveaway. And at 1,000 subscriptions, I will, subscribers, I will do a $100 Amazon giveaway. So please tell your friends, get them to join up. I know there's enough raid players out there because the big boys got 30K. I'm only asking for one. Just asking for one. So if you have to bribe, blackmail, whatever the case may be, do it please and uh, we can have some fun thank you for enjoying the video i hope you did uh, i will see you in the next video hopefully may remember of course be kind to one another practice social distancing and we will see you in the next video
Your soul. 